you had an idea that you cared about enough to put tons of work and bring it to people against all odds and and probably into the face of a lot of criticism. <laughs> Hey, so I'm Demon Dev, and I thought I'd do a bit of a take on how to orient towards your project when it comes to indie game development. Now, I've touched on in the past how um, a lot of programmers or just game de developers that, that do projects in their free time or for their, their main work uh, get pretty frustrated by how difficult it is to complete a project. I think a lot of people, what they enjoy about game jams is with a tight deadline, they're able to uh, summon the focus it takes to at least aim towards a, a finishing point uh, that is realistic. But I actually have some doubts about whether the kind of, I think, mindset that a lot of people arrive at with game development is correct. Now, easy for me to say, I've spent a lot of years working on the same project. So easy for me to say that, you know, uh, completionism is is not a top priority. But I I think that it's alienating people from like the true calling. And what I mean by that is just we make games, I, at least I make games because I have ideas that are important to me that I'm passionate about or I'm just interested in exploring, I think are cool or fun or other people might think are fun or cool. Um, that is such a process to go from those ideas to a playable experience. And I think people should respect that that's such a process and be less trigger happy on frustration with projects not getting completed. I think there's a lot of reasons that we should uh, kind of push back on that idea. One is that not all projects in whatever weird objective sense you want to jump into, not all projects deserve to be completed on a, on a personal level. Uh, there's something valuable in all projects. I, I do believe that. But when you're working on a project and you find yourself starting to lose motivation, Ideally, you'll be engaging in some sort of reflection or play testing or balancing ideas off of other people, you know, trying to kickstart momentum in, in many different ways. But if you continually find yourself falling into a rut of just not being able to, you know, make the next step on a project, one of the possibilities that few people want to entertain is that the project doesn't inspire you anymore. And maybe that's because there's another project waiting out waiting somewhere for you that will inspire you more. You know, sometimes your abilities outgrow the project. And even though the project project is far from done, your expanded abilities are pulling you to do new and more exciting things and not even necessarily in the right direction. I think a lot of times the more expertise you get, sometimes the farther away you can grow from whatever part of you, you know, loves games or the people that would have played your game or the person that, that dreamed up the idea in the first place. I definitely have strong feelings when I worked on a phone game called Deliverance that um, I was inspired at the beginning by, you know, really just a standard tower defense with only the look and feel seeming like it was mounted on a car, like a mobile tower defense. I wanted there to be no piloting of the car whatsoever. Uh, partially that was because I thought my programming abilities weren't up to it. Uh, during that mm, like three to four year process of working on the game, I actually ended up switching to it being a pretty standard, you know, tilt screen or tap the different sides of the screen to steer where 99% of what you were doing was steering the car and like falling into ditches in the lava it like was hardly about the, you know, the quick mini game of selecting your, you know, different guns and stuff and, um, and seeing the impact of that in the world, pretty much all guns behave similarly and would kind of shoot or destroy stuff as you pass. It was very little about the tower defense aspect by the end. Um, and during that process, I wasn't inspired by the game towards the end. I was inspired by the idea of completionism. I thought that there was something wrong with me. I think that's something that a lot of people face when they're working on these projects that are so meaningful that they spend more time doing than, 
you know, hardly anyone spends on anything, especially outside of a job. It's a Herculean effort to make a game. And so you end up coming into some extreme self-doubt despite the time investment because you're thinking, okay, well, I've spent all this time and, and for what? What have I got from it? Other people will spend this time or even less time and arrive with a product that they can sell, that people will buy, that, um, that they can be proud of. And me, I've got nothing. I've got like a couple of tech demo things moving, a couple of mechanics, uh, unfinished first level. What's going on? Well, I just need to force myself to finish the project and then I'll, you know, kind of have the awakening. I think, and I, you know, say this from the place of having done that, I think that if you get to a deeper level of reflection, you'll find that either you've drifted too far from, you know, what inspires you about your project. If you're having motivational problems or just, you know, taking that next step, you know, opening up the project files and making a difference in the game, playing through and, and looking for what needs to be done. If you're having issues with that, I think there's a deeper level of reflection you can get to, to figure out what really matters about your project. Maybe that's changed in a way that won't force you to drop the project and move to another one. Maybe it will. But I think that's an emotional language that should be way more part of projects. You know, I think people just assume that projects deserve to be completed. I completely disagree. I think some projects, no matter how much they inspire you at the beginning, if by the time you're midway through or, or something, you're not feeling it, you need to resolve those feelings and not just force yourself to finish things. Maybe some people are able to force themselves to finish things. Um, I felt like maybe I did that, but you know, cut, cut so many corners that I didn't really like my, my phone game deliverance by the end of it. You know, maybe that works for some people in, you know, a results aspect. Okay. The game's complete, but I don't think that's the way to live your life as a game, de a game developer. I think you should stay in touch with how you feel about your project and, you know, you start with the love of the project generally, or just, you know, excitement about exploring what's possible, what you can do, what you can accomplish. And uh, it's not weird to lose that a lot of the time, but I think we should always be striving to, to regain that. And so that if we are alive at a place where the game is done and complete and released, you know, it's a place of happiness, not of, um, of torture and, um, and the need for, um, for recovery. I don't know. I definitely do see a lot of indie game developers. I feel like struggling emotionally, you know, at least the, the news would be that they ran into significant personal crisis, no matter how many millions or billions they made or crisis with the ones around them. And maybe that's just, you know, regular human experience and has less to do with the game development. But I feel like game development, especially in the indie side, is so near and dear to our hearts that it should be a completely emotionally attached process. Does that means doesn't mean you're going to feel great about the project every day um, or happy with what you end up with, but you should be connected enough to give yourself some portion of the credit that you deserve. That you know that you had an idea that you cared about enough to put tons of work and bring it to people against all odds and and probably into the face of a lot of criticism and less than five-star reviews. Um, I think it's a, a really incredible thing that exists in modern times that, that people can, can make games and uh, that we should deprioritize the, um, the pressure put on by ourselves towards game developers. Uh, you know, we want the games that are promised. <laughs> that have uh, shipping deadlines to meet those or, you know, not get delayed too much. That's understandable. But I think as a developer, especially at the indie level, you have to put that to the side to a significant amount. It's really about you and your project, I think, fundamentally. And only, and I think practically, only when you resolve that and feel overall pretty good about you, your vision, and, you know, what your work on it feels like and looks like only when those are more or less resolved is it a, a worthy effort. Um, I want great games to come out and I want to recognize the sacrifice that some people, that most most people that make games, especially the ones that are beloved by the community, have made. I want to recognize that. That is amazing. But I don't know if the 
the deep personal sacrifices that are leaving people what seems like somewhat broken as necessary. I think that we should uh, we should let this you know this art form uh, take a second seat to to our relationship to it. Anyways, just some thoughts on maybe a little bit healthier uh, ways to reflect on the game development process. Maybe give yourself less of a hard time. It's a, a miracle that any game gets finished, especially by uh, such small teams. And uh, I think it's really cool. Keep it up. Uh, talk to you again soon.